here at Grand Prix Quebec City in Canada. They've been fantastic hosts to us this round and one day still to go on our Canadian odyssey around the world of magic. It is Shahar Shenhar of Israel and the United States on your left. There he is up against the Slovak Republic man, the GP Lisbon champion just a few weeks ago, Ivan Flock. And we're away with the first play of the game being a far seek for Shahar Shenhar. We're going to see plenty of similar cards, Marshall, from both decks. This is a certainly a, a large amount of a Jun mirror. Yeah, now usually it's a good thing for Shahar to get out to an early mana lead. It's going to allow him to do more powerful things sooner. And it's also going to uh, turn on really huge spells for him like Garrick Primal Hunter and potentially Rakdos is returning. I haven't seen Shenhar's exact list. I'm not sure if he's running it, but if he is, those spells, those X spells as we call them, can be truly devastating in these mirror-ish mirror, mirror -ish matches. Mm -hmm. First Hunt Master of the Fells uh, of the match belongs again to Shahar Shenhar. Definitely a solid start for Shahar. He's got four power and toughness on the board. He's also forcing his opponent to start doing things. And Pillar of Flame is going to instantly take out that Huntmaster, and it's going to be followed up by uh, Farseek. Yvonne's taking a look at his hand, figuring out what it is exactly that he w needs to get to make sure he doesn't screw this up. Do you have a sense of how much of the Jun Mirror is about aggression and who can be in front? Like here, Shahar has currently the only board presence, only a 2 2, uh -huh. but he is also the player with untapped mana, his opponent doesn't. Uh, how much is that a, a deal? Is it a very swingy matchup? Is it very grindy? How, how can we expect uh, things to play out? My impression of the matchup now, I haven't played it, so I, I can't speak with any played huge a ton. authority. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I've played it a little bit, but, mm -hmm. uh, but basically <coughs> it feels like there's you will have answers for each of your opponent's threats. It's a matter of matching up threats to Sequencing answers. Sequencing kind of thing? Right. Like, uh, you know, right now we see that um, Shahar has Olivia Voldaren on the table and a wolf token, and Yvonne has a, uh, a, an Abrupt Decay in hand. That's not going to hit Olivia Voldaren. He could take out the wolf token if he mm -hmm. wanted, but probably better off just playing the Thrag Tusk, which is exactly what he's going to do here. Yep. And, you know, so these are kind of haymakers going back and forth, but right now Olivia Voldaren is, is clearly the most important card on the battlefield, and as long as Shahar can keep that the case and keep her alive uh, he's going to be in a really good position to uh, take over this game mm -hmm. so Shahar has plenty of cards in hand they're all very powerful they are he's got a Rakdos's return we mentioned before we also <laughs> mentioned the Garrick's pr uh, Garrick Primal Hunter he has that too he's got it at least two removal spells indeed I think he has three he's got Pillar of Flame Abrupt Decay and a Murder yep uh, so a lot of things are not for this world on Flock's side of the board. Now, he did miss his land drop here, so Shahar mm. is sitting on four. He can't cast any of those powerful five drops, and what he's decided to do is leave up Murder and or using Olivia Voldaren in, in lieu of uh, playing his Rakdos's return. Uh-huh. So let's see what Yvonne comes up with, because this is a big turn for him. He needs to put something pretty significant out. looks like he's going to play an Olivia Voldaren of his own, which is really pretty good for Shahar. As... Uh, he, he gets to be the one to untap and play some big threat where the, both of these Olivias are going to be uh, ruling each other out, so to speak. All right, so before the uh, Olivia Vol Voldaren die, he is going to ping the Thrag Tusk. What that's going to do is it's going to put a point of damage on it, meaning that if Yvonne attacks, Shahar can trade his uh, wolf token for it. It's also going to make it into a vampire, so if Shahar were to cast Olivia Voldaren later and that Thrag Tusk happened to still be around, he could just pay three black black and steal it immediately. Thrag Tusk v. Wolf. Flock is thinking he could use a Pillar of Flame to take out the wolf, allowing him to get in for the five damage here, but if he waits a turn, he won't have to use that Pillar of Flame. I don't know if he has one in his hand anyway. It's the only thing. Oh, he's got a bonfire of the damn mm. hand. He so passes. he was just deciding if he really wanted to trade off, and he decided not to. Boom, there's a land for Shahar Shenhar. Yep. It looks like we're going to see <laughs> Garrick or something here. And very quickly played. Uh, happy to pay the two life uh, for that fifth land. The Overgrown Tomb comes into play untapped. Fourth counter. And now, in addition to a wolf, there is going to be a beast in play. That's right. Tokens galore, and we could see yet more tokens if even Flock sends his Thrag Tusk into the red zone. That's right. Now, I'm, I'm expecting to see um, potentially a bonfire here for two. That would take out the wolf and lower 
uh, Garrick down to two so that he can't use the minus ability to draw cards equal to the highest power among creatures you control. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can sort of help contain Garrick, although, and he still gets to take out a wolf as well. He can also throw his Thrag Tusk at Garrick and, and force Jahar to trade off for that beast token if he'd like, leaving him with the beast token. He's just going to do it first. Sh is Shahar going to? Yeah, he is going to say sure. Mm -hmm. And, the and it just that sh one dies. Just and now the beast. <laughs> yeah, kind of. That was nice. Yeah. All right, so 13. now Flock has this, and he's just going to play another Thrag Tusk, so he is going to let Shahar untap. If he wants, Shahar can draw two cards with the wolf, but Shahar's going to be looking to resolve that uh, Rakdos' return and clear out Ivan's hand. I believe he only has two cards left. With Garrick Primal Hunter and his opponent on the board and his mm. opponent with no cards in hand, Shahar would be in the driver's seat to yep. take over this game. Oh, we go to now five. That is a beast, not an elephant, even though uh, it's sure. tusks and a trunk. Uh-huh. Right, there's a Kessig Wolf run as well, which is going to be nice later on. Let's see if, if Shahar pulls the trigger on this uh, Rakdos' return. It is, in fact, three cards in hand for Yvonne Flock. So even then, though, mm -hmm. Shahar's in a position to be able to just wipe his hand out. And that's what's going to happen. Yep. Abrupt Decay, Forest, Bonfire of the Damned. Yeah, so devastating blow as we see that, uh, that early... Farseek enabling, uh, now he did miss a couple of lands, mm -hmm. but thanks to the Farseek he was able to play Garrick, Primal Hunter, and Rakdos' Return, which is more powerful than the two Thrag Tusks that uh, Yvonne has been able to come up with here. And although it may not matter right now, also in play on Shahar's side of the board is a Kessig Wolfram. That's right, which is a great win condition for any creature. I don't know, I didn't hear if Yvonne was attacking Garrick or attacking Shahar, but we can only assume that it's attacking Garrick. All right, so they make the same play again. And oh, so it, was, it must have been at Shahar. So, so Dreadbore is going <coughs> to be, is going to take down uh, Garrick. Yeah, and of course the thing is, Shahar can just come back again. Hey, you know I had a Garrick Primal Hunter on this bit of the table a minute ago. <laughs> well, I've got one now as well, and now here's my beast back again. And now your Thrag Tusk is gone, and your Dreadbore is gone, and you're still playing off the top. Hmm. All right, so both of the beasts are going to crash in towards Garrick, and there's going to be an abrupt decay to take out one and a traded beast token. You can see that, mm -hmm. you know, your question earlier, Rich, was about is this about attrition, and you can see that it is. Yep. They are just grinding each other's permanence down, and, and the where one we've that plays got the to big swingers is the one mm. that's going to... But, but also where we've got to is that 2-2 two -two wolf token from that very first Hunt Master of the Fowls. It's the only thing left standing. That's right, and it's it's... it's Insignificant enough. And so what we see here is Kessig Wolf Run is going to make that wolf token a six power creature, and mm -hmm. then Garrick Primal Hunter is going to minus, so he's going to draw wolf. six. And this really should be the game for Shahar Shenhar. Yeah. Uh, and he's also, by the way, going to hit Yvonne for six this turn. Yeah. Yes, all the cards in the world. He's got a Liliana there, a Dreadbolt. He's actually drawn a lot of land he has uh, through that sequence, but. Nonetheless. Also Farseek in there. It's kind of the, the least of the, the problems. Yeah, so he's he's ditching Farseek in a... I guess just the Farseek, because he did get to play a land for the turn. Is that yeah, I mean? think so. I think that uh, yeah. Summit is, is just so in play. That means that Shahar does have the full amount, seven cards in hand. He's facing down an empty board and now an Arbor Elf. Feel the joy. The saddest Arbor Elf in the world. Uh-huh. Ooh, and a Bonfire. He almost drew it, but he stopped himself from doing it. It is going to be Bonfire for 7. That's going to drop Yvonne down to 11 and now 9 after the Wolf token hits. Boom. And he's going to make a Beast. And this one looks pretty locked up for Shahar. What can Yvonne draw to get out of this situation? His own Bonfire. Miracle the Bonfire, damn? yeah. Yeah, that would be a, a great draw for him. It would kill Garrick. But even then, Shahar is going to be sitting there with 6 mm. cards in hand and uh, staring down Yvonne. So yeah. as we see... Yep. Shahar takes it. He does. And Shah Shenhar, only 19 year, years old, currently living in Israel, but traveling the world, playing the game, as they say. Uh, there you see him in his MTG Madness shirt. He has two Grand Prix. A lot of players never get two Grand Prix top eights. Mm -hmm. He not only has two Grand Prix top eights, he has two Grand Prix titles yeah. by the time he's 19. Uh, and he is just a threat at every single event that he plays in. He's a tremendous player. Super, super solid. So that's 1-0 to Shenha. Flock, meanwhile, now has to fight his way back into this one. Now, at a, an 800-player event, there's only 128 players coming back uh, for day two, mm -hmm. or all the seven twos, whichever is higher, but the, the math generally works out. It's usually 128. It's usually like one 
119, 120, uh -huh. I think, if memory serves, uh, that are actually, um, you, you know, would be in automatically uh -huh. and then there are a few six and threes okay. that kind of squeak in the back door uh -huh. at this kind of number um, because of that the difference between eight and one and seven and two is not quite as large as it can be at some other events um, certainly for example when we look to Charlotte uh, for those of you watching uh, there and we hope that you're enjoying both uh, our streams coming to you in the, the world of Magic the Gathering broadcasting whether you're enjoying our company or those of Tom Martell and Glenn Jones currently uh, over at Star City um, we, we just hope you love magic and enjoy you know um, one of the things that always makes me laugh is I see people on Facebook and you get mess. I'm sure you get messages too. It's like, oh, don't you hate so and so? And it's like, oh, they're not as good as you. Or they're better than you. Or we hate the way you do this. Or we love the <laughs> way you do that. And yeah. that these other people don't do that. Do you know what, boys and girls? We're all colleagues. We're in the broadcasting business together. Yeah. We all love magic. There isn't a single magic broadcaster who doesn't love this game. That's right. Uh, and they and they are there to give you the best service they can and we can. Right. So we hope you enjoy and we hope you will have your favorite commentators and analysts uh, to enjoy the games with. Right now, you're looking at Dave Shields and Thomas Holtzinger, the Austrian Holtzinger with his top eight from the Pro Tour last year. Shields, so nearly his first Pro Tour top eight this past week. But ultimately, it was Melissa de Tora who edged past Shields in an epic feature match encounter. And uh, that left Dave Shields on the outside looking in. Uh, on a Sunday that ultimately saw Tom Martell with the Aristocrats take it down. And Thomas Holtzinger is playing the Aristocrats. He's got a Cartel Aristocrat in play. He's got some Lingering Souls tokens. He's got a Champion of the Parish. He has got some seriously interesting tokens over there. And on the other side, <laughs> Dave Shields, Blue White Red, Boros Reckoner, Restoration Angel. That's a troll token. Troll face. Mm-hmm. Interestingly here, uh, Tomas only has three lands in play versus seven for Dave Shields. <laughs> yeah. But, he, but you can see that uh, Tomas's <laughs> board is, is quite well developed here. Bunch of spirits, aristocrat, and the uh, champion of the parish. Yeah, we can say that Holtzinger's deck can function on a lower, a lower level than the blue-white-red. That's right. Uh, okay, Mizium Mortars is going to be, yes, overloaded. Uh-huh. And that's going to probably take out everything except for the aristocrat. Yeah. Sack to give protection. Yeah. And that prevents all the damage. That's one of the many facets of protection. Yes. And the aristocrat will block Boris Reckoner. That prevents but a damage. Yeah, but that Mizium Mortis was a huge deal for Shields, who is now well ahead in this one. Holtzinger down to nine. Bottom corner, we're keeping an eye. We'll get you straight back for game two. If they don't mulligan, we'll be back over there. And Holtzinger does have a land. He's got a Sacred Foundry on the right of his hand. By the way, the new art on that Sacred Foundry is sweet. It's really pretty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it stands out. Have you seen that the, the two streams are like both sides of the Sacred Foundry on magicthegathering.com? When you go to the front page of coverage today. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they've split the Sacred I, I've Foundry I've been on the page, up. but I didn't see it. Yeah, it's really, really gorgeous. All right, looks like the players are, and, and our main feature match are uh, okay. underway. Yep. So, so uh, we're switch back. Goodbye to Dave Shields. Goodbye, Thomas Holtzinger. Let's get you back to Shahar Shenhar on the left, up against Even Flock on the right. Flock has begun game two because he lost the first. On the play, definitely advantageous. You hardly see anyone drawing in standard these days. It used to be quite a big thing. People didn't know what to do with, mm. with the decks, but... Um, it has sort of become the default that you, you go first, you win the die roll, off you go. And it's Farseek to start for even flock. All right, so similar start to what Shahar had in the last game. And again, it's going to put him up a mana drop and enable him to cast bigger, more powerful spells earlier than Shahar, which is a huge advantage in this matchup. We saw Shahar leverage that early Farseek into not only Garrick Primal Hunter, but also Rakdos' return, both of which were instrumental to him winning the game. See that uh, Shahara has a pretty stacked hand here. 
if Ivan can put a bunch of pressure on him, it would certainly slow him down. But right now, Alberov, awesome Tatland, Pass. Yep. Mm. And along with all the awesome stuff, land to d do stuff with it. So we're going to see Bonfire of the Damned for one. It's just going to one for one for that Arbor Elf also do one damage to Yvonne. But he, again, the mana, the mana race is super important here. And Shahar is hyper aware of it and does not want Yvonne to get even one step ahead of him. And it would potentially be six to three. Mm -hmm. Also, turn, so uh, Shahar just didn't have any other plays that turn. <laughs> he wanted mm -hmm. to do something with this mana. With all those cards in hand, he knows that if this game goes long, he's going to be in a good position. He's got Olivia Voldaren. <coughs> Speaking of which. Yeah, he's got Thrag Tusk, and he has uh, Garrick, Primal Hunter, in his hand. Yeah, so Olivia Voldaren for Ivan Floch is going to put him in a nice position here. It looks like uh, Shahar is going to be in the opposite of what he was in the first yeah. game, where he's going to have to be the one. No, nope, no, he's not. He's got Murder in No, I was going to say, he just drew Murder that you turn. You saw that, so okay. Yeah, so... Uh, Absolutely right. Board state-wise, big advantage flock. But that murder means we're pretty sure that's what's... Uh, oh, fantastic. This is great for Shahar. Uh, so Yvonne attacks. Shahar says no blocks. And uh, Yvonne dumps his whole entire turn worth of mana. He clearly didn't have anything else to do with it. But he just had to do that into Olivia Voldaren. And boom, it gets murdered for... We call that the time walk. <laughs> you know, he, he basically made him use up his entire turn worth of mm -hmm. mana development, or of mana. Uh, Tap my land, pass the turn. Yeah. it's kind of what happened. Yep. And it looks like Shahar's decided to just use up all of his mana on his turn and lead off with Garrick Primal Hunter. He does not have the, uh, the wolf run this time, but... Well, literally, I don't want to use the word momentum because that has certain connotations of philosophical mm -hmm. overtones, but... This is a new phase of the game, mm -hmm. and in this new phase of the game that ended with that murder, it yeah. begins with Shahar with Garrett Primal Hunter and a beast. And Whoa. now it's all about what will the comeback be. And all we right. see, get rid of the, the beast, put Garrett to one, now here's Thrag Tusk. Then what? Another beast. Garrett up to two. And Flock. Sits there, seven land, now eight. It's a second Kessig Wolf run. He's going to make a Thrag Tusk of his own. That does not answer Garrett Primal Hunter, though. As Shahar untaps with six mana, now seven available. Should he lay one of the two in his hand? Dragon Skull summoned in a forest there. Yep, he's also got a Live of Voldaren and a Thrag Tusk in hand, so he's looking to be in yeah. the driver's seat in a pretty big way here. Not that Ivan doesn't have outs here. He can Miracle a Bonfire and get right back in this. He's not desperately behind on the board, but knowing what Shahar has in hand, uh, Ivan is in a pretty rough spot. That Kessig Wolf run's going to help. Yeah, and you also have to assume, though, that uh, Flock, because of that turn where he did dump all his mana into a Kessig Wolf run, he didn't have a lot to develop his board, so it isn't like he, his hand is likely to be stacked compared to Shahar's. That's right. So Shahar decides to play out Olivia Voldar, and he's left himself up three mana. Can't really do anything with it, except for ping a 1-1. One, one. So, Bonfire? That's a not right that's now. That's a drawn card, so that's not it. Mm -hmm. Now he can make that Thrag Tusk massive, give it trample, and he can give it plus five pl uh, plus zero here. Mm. So he could Ten kill Garrick if trample? he wanted. Yeah, I mean, unless Shahar wants to throw his entire team in front, you know, all of his tokens and such. Shahar's really hoping. Trample. Yeah, Shahar's yeah Shahar's really hoping to untap with Garrick here. It doesn't look like he's going to get to unless he just. Wants to throw, let's see, so it's, if it's 11, trample, that's 3, 6, now you would have to throw everything in front. Okay, so one, I said I didn't want to talk about psychology in regard to the word momentum, but I do want to ask about psychology now. You've just seen Shahar murder something and take his entire turn away for Flock. Yeah. Does Flock not fear that one of those two cards for Shahar is he, murder again? He definitely fears it. So what's going to happen is, is that he has to decide if it's worth the risk. And looks like he's going to say, I'm, yeah, I'm going to head in that direction anyway. He just doesn't do it for the uh -huh. full amount. He hedges a little bit by not taking out everything. And uh, it, I mean, 
I don't know if it what it would have changed. Like if he has murder, he has murder, I suppose. But he oh, that's why he's got <laughs> a Garrick Primal Hunter to follow up with. All right, so that makes a lot of sense now. And Flock has actually got himself in a reasonable position here. The problem, mm. of course, is is that Olivia Voldarn is going to absolutely take over this game. Yeah. Flock is fighting. He is fighting to try to get this board stable, but Olivia Voldarn is just going to wreck him here as he can, as Shahar can just outright steal that beast because he made sure to ping it on end step. It is now a vampire beast, <laughs> Super. which is kind of hard to imagine, but he... Oh, it looks like he's just going to kill it. It's going to put four counters on, and it's going to make Shahar have a, a 13 power on the battlefield here, which is a two-turn clock. Absolutely. And it looks like Shahar just says, let's get rowdy and just going to battle. Get He's going to shoot one of his guys, yeah. too. Smash. Yeah. You've got one turn, even Flock, or this game is done, and this day is done. Here we go. Hey! Yvonne doesn't find the answer. Shake the hand. Shahar Shenha goes to 8-1 and one overnight. Congratulations to him, and again... Such a cool customer. He will think that is the job barely half done. He's right. 